So people have been requesting that I talk about this massive solar storm. These colossal X-class solar flares that have been released from the sun pretty much back to back. This solar activity has been really worrying some people, but is there really a reason to worry? Well, first and foremost, let's go ahead and look at the sunspot. Sprawling out at almost 200,000 kilometers from end to end, the sunspot AR3664 is currently 15 times wider than Earth. So that means you can fit 15 Earths just in that sunspot alone. That's pretty crazy. This sunspot is such a behemoth that you can actually see this sunspot from Earth without the need of any type of magnification. And they are saying, if you still have those solar eclipse glasses lying around, you can actually see it by wearing those glasses. At the end of the day, I do not recommend staring at the sun, even with those special glasses on. But you do you, that's just my opinion. But here's why some people are worried that this solar storm is actually a end of the world style event. But before we do begin, I do wanna stress once again, like with the solar eclipse, this is not me saying that the world is going to end. This is me saying this is why people are worried that this could be a end of the world style event. I will get into why we may not have to worry, but let's first get into why we have to worry. So the vast size of the sunspot AR3664 rivals Carrington sunspot of 1859. As depicted in this image from spaceweather.com, Carrington sunspot is known for its explosive rampage between August and September of 1859. Now, during that explosive rampage, when the sun fired off a series of powerful solar flares and CMEs, resulting in major geomagnetic storms, that ignited telegraph offices and triggered auroras as close to the equator as Cuba and Hawaii. So you can already see the problem. The 1800s had technology that went down and the 1800s has nowhere near the technological dependency that we do today. The 1800s did not have the power grid that we do today and this power grid can be very vulnerable to these solar flares, these solar storms. So yes, if this very powerful geomagnetic solar storm were to knock out the grid, take down the power grid, it definitely would be a end of the world style event. Many people believe that if the grid goes down, we're instantly gonna be transported back to the 1990s, that magical time when we were all out riding our bicycles and drinking, what did they drink in the 1990s? I, I think they drank uh, Surge Soda and Zimas. Why many people do believe that this would be a end of the world style event as opposed to living in the 1800s or the stone ages is because essentially we do not know what to do without technology. That is the truth. There are very rare examples of people that can live off the grid, that can live off the land. But for 95 to 98% of us, that's not the case. Many of us don't even have cash lying around or tradable currency like gold. All of our currency is inside the bank and the bank runs off computers. Many of us have to get our food from supermarkets and supermarkets also run off computers. So like I said, 95 to 98% of us around the world would pretty much be living in darkness. But here's the thing, gloom and doom aside, there are Carrington class solar storms that do occur every 40 to 60 years or so. And right now we are long overdue for one. But there is no evidence that any CMEs are currently en route from previous solar eruptions this week that could cause a new Carrington style event. So for instance, if this was related to hurricanes, the Carrington style event would be a category five. We are currently at a category four. We are currently at a severe level. Could that change? Yes, that's always a possibility. We were before at a level three, a moderate, the solar storm, an increase in activity, we are now at a level four. So yes, there's always a possibility we could go to that level five, but if it stays the same, the most that will happen, the most that will happen is us seeing these brilliant auroras in the sky, but also the worst that could possibly happen are triggering GPS problems, hampering satellite communication, and cause blackouts of high frequency radio. Because of the multiple CMEs from AR3634 spanning from May 8th to May 9th, there will be a powerful geomagnetic storming from May 10th to May 12th, but the bulk of the storming will take place on May 11th. So tomorrow will really be the day that's gonna let us know if we're gonna be seeing this Carrington style event 
or more than likely it's just going to stay at a severe level four. But even if a Carrington style event happened today, is there really reason to worry? Yes and no. Yes, there's reason to worry because once again, we would be knocked into beyond the stone ages, but they can take precautions to make sure the grid does not get destroyed, such as shutting down the grid during these very powerful storms. So between May 10th and the 12th, we would essentially live in three days of darkness unless you have a backup generating system, but that's better than the alternative, the storms knocking down the grid and us living in darkness and chaos for years, which again would not happen. The probability of that is very, very low. I would be more worried and more cautious about hackers taking down the grid as opposed to these solar storms. So I know this is rare coming from me, the guy that's always labeled the monger of fear, but essentially there's nothing really to worry about when it comes to these solar storms. Matter of fact, during the Carrington event, telegraph operators were able to improve the performance of the telegraph by unplugging from the batteries and running just off the induced current from the geomagnetic storm. So there may even be an upside to these powerful geomagnetic storms. So again, there's really nothing to worry about when it comes to these geomagnetic storms, even if we were to get hit with a Carrington style event, they do have backups, they do have ways to make sure we're not sent back or blasted beyond the stone ages. But when these events do happen, it's a scary reminder just how dependent we are on technology. If technology was to be instantly stripped away from us, most of us would not know what to do. We would be lost. We would pretty much be in darkness. But in any case, thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you want to see more, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please like, because any engagement does help the channel grow. Once again, thank you so much for your support.